sending a client or prospect a personalized and detailed Google Doc with their name, logo, and custom analysis instantly builds trust and makes you look super professional. The problem is these docs can take hours to make with a ton of copy and pasting. So in this video, I'll show you three ways to automatically make Google Docs using NADN and AI. I've built these for my clients as well as my own business for lead generation, client reports, and onboarding. They not only save hours, but every doc looks like it was handcrafted. So let's jump in. The three versions I'm going to show you on how to create Google Docs are going to be one from a template, two from a markdown, and three from HTML. And I'll have this available for download so you can play with it too on your own. So let's jump into the first one. This is by far my favorite uh, style, which is creating a Google Doc from a template. But let's go look at the output of what this uh, creates first. Now, if I were to send this to uh, a client, this would look super professional. And we have uh, metrics, we have insights into what's changed, we have scores, we have key findings, we have recommendations. Now I could go much further on styling this, but I created this uh, template quickly for this example. Google has a ton of templates you can actually just pull from. So let's run through how I created this super cool doc that is extremely personalized. This workflow actually pulls from this template here. And this template includes a ton of uh, variables that I've set. I defined where these would go. I included what wouldn't be replaced. So executive summary wouldn't be replaced. Recommendations wouldn't be replaced. You could style this however you'd like. But I mainly wanted to keep it simple. Uh, I've used a very similar format for actually a live uh, project. And so all these variables end up getting replaced by the content within our AI automation. So let's jump over the workflow and see what is actually happening. Now I've set this up to mimic some type of real world project where you would probably have a list of potentially like people like clients or prospects or cold outreach targets that you would want to target. And I've added a couple columns to just show how we can pull custom data and have AI actually generate the full report. So it has some, you know, description, uh, ad spend, website sessions. And the idea is we're kind of mimicking a, a marketing a report or analysis, and this is going to be some of the data that's going to go into it. So most likely you would fill this up with, you know, Acme Co, Beta Co, and you'd have their information. And then we'd use this in our NADN workflow to pull the data, which you can see if I execute the step, we're going to pull the data from our growth edge marketing, which is our first row here. We have the rest of the information got pulled in as well. And then we're going to send this to our LLM to actually generate whatever type of report we want. Now, if you look through the prompt I created, this is literally a example prompt for this video, but hopefully this triggers your thoughts on what you could generate. So imagine that you have a client or your own company that you always are creating the same reports over and over again. I would suggest figuring out what type of data you need to pull and then work backwards and figure out what data you need and then be able to get the data and then generate your actual analysis that would go into the document. So this prompt really just says, uh, I think it literally says like uh, you're creating a fake uh, yeah, demo data for a YouTube walkthrough. But the idea is the output's going to be our JSON object, which I'll run through in a second. And then the input's going to be all the data from our last step, which was our company name, industry, reporting period, all these things. And then the output uh, requirements is pretty much saying like, you know, give us valid JSON. Now, the most important part is matching up your variables to whatever variables you have within your uh, Google Doc. So let's go back to our template. You can see our Google Doc has executive summary. So I just grabbed this down to, you know, metric one, uh, metric one score. So I just grabbed all of these and added them to the output as a JSON variables, and you'll see in a minute, the output will actually pre-fill this in with the information, with that, with like live information. So let's run this step and see uh, the actual output that we get. And I'm using a basic model. You can use whichever model that makes sense. Usually I'd probably use like uh, the new like five, uh, GPT-5 mini. So let's look at the output. We have uh, the executive summary, which is, you know, looks super cool, looks super professional. Uh, ROI, uh, you know, metric score, and, and, you know, it goes on and on. So again, the idea is you would replace all of this with your actual live data that you'd want to share with the client. And now the important piece is we have a template. So let me go back to our file structure. So I have a template here, which shows, uh, you know, example, Google Doc, we've already opened it, we've looked at it, you know, this is the actual template that we're using. 
And by template, I mean this is just a Google Doc, just like a plain old Google Doc. Create a Google Doc and you know style it and add your variables however you want. But what we're going to do is copy the template, as in copy the Google Doc. And we have a bunch of uh, pre-made nodes within our workflow that allows us to just grab the template, which once you authenticate with Google, you'd have access to all of your files. We give it a name. I just put a generic name in here. I put a timestamp just so uh, for my own sake, I know which was the most recent one I created. And then I just threw it in the same folder. However, you can choose whichever folder you want to put it into if you would like it in a different folder. Sometimes it does get crazy. So I'd probably normally actually create a folder within the parent folder, like a subfolder of like generated docs, and it would go in there. So that's gonna copy our uh, file. And the output's just gonna be some, you know, basic, like, hey, this was, this was output. This was our, our ID, the new name. Uh, and if we actually, if we went to the, drive here, you would see it created a, a new one. All right, now this is the most important piece of the entire step, which is the replace text in a Google Doc. So this node is just the uh, Google Doc node, and it is the update a document. And we have control within it. So let's jump over and delete the one that it just generated. So we're gonna do update. We grab the ID from our previous step where it created the Google Doc. And then we really just have to go through every single variable that we created and enter the old text and then put the new text in. Now, the important thing is that the text matches exactly to whatever you want to replace. Now, if you noticed, I used what's called mustache case in here. You can use whatever you want to. So you could, uh, instead of brackets, you could use, you know, a billion stars, whatever you want. The important thing is, is that it's consistent and the same. Mustache case is pretty standard, so I like to use that. And then within our uh, update text portion, we just need to make sure that it matches exactly. And so we'll do match case just to make sure that it actually matches the case. And then we put the new text in to replace the old text with uh, what we got from our output of our JSON object from our OpenAI node. Now, again, you could replace this with anything and your AI, you got multiple steps of AI and analysis and pulling data from different locations and ultimately updating the Google Doc. My, uh, what I wanna get across here mainly is how to update a Google Doc with information. Then you really just go through every single variable. So it's like, you know, key findings, metric one score, you know, go through every single variable and just replacing it with the data that was uh, created in my last step. And it's super long and somewhat tedious, but what you do it once and then you don't have to ever do it again. So let's run this and it immediately updates the document and we can come and see that our document is, uh, has been replaced with our text. The nice thing is it does take into account line breaks. So you can see the output from the previous step uh, included these line breaks, which is this slash in here. Now you notice the image is not working yet and I'll show you in a minute that that is a separate step, but let's keep going through these final steps. Now creating the Google Doc is awesome. So we have this cool Google Doc. We wanna be able to have people see it, but currently it's only accessible to me. But instead of going and clicking share and sharing it, you know, if you have 50 clients, you have to do 50 reports per month, or you have 5,000 prospects that you wanna send these custom generated reports to that look handcrafted, you don't want to have to actually manually share them all. So we're gonna use the share file option, which is in the Google Drive node, and there's a share option in here. Share file, share folder, we're just gonna share the file. And it's really simple, it just takes the ID of the last step when we created the file. And we can see that through our copy template here, it was our ID here, so we just dragged that over there. And then we just wanna give it uh, the reader permission and give it access to anyone. So this means anyone with the URL can read this, that's the easiest step to be able to share it with anyone. So you don't have to worry about any type of uh, restrictions with someone like logging in or giving them like a specific email access to it. It just makes it, it just complicates a little bit. And then a realistic step I threw in here was just adding uh, the doc that was created back into our Google sheet. So you can see I had our Google sheet. We could throw in, you know, hundred names in here, a thousand names, whatever we want. We have this Google sheet URL and all this step really does is just add it back in there. So if I run it, it should uh, throw the URL in there. Now, if you wanna replace an image, this is where it gets a little tricky. How Google Docs is structured is it ultimately is a bunch of like elements 
on a page. So each one of these is like element. I think that's what they even call them. So if I run this, you can see what the output looks like. So this is pretty much what the page looks like it is like this crazy um, object. Is it like an array or like some object with all these different types of like paragraph styles and all this craziness. So what you have to do is pretty much get all of the image IDs from the uh, Google Doc. Uh, that's what the step does. So this has the entire structure of our document. And then the next step is calling the API, the Google API, and doing a batch update, which is a special type of update, which we can specifically update like an item within the Google Doc. And we're going to do this funky JSON here that we choose the ID. And this is a little unique, but you're pretty much going to search uh, inline object ID within your previous step. Drag this over to the spot because it might not be in the same spot that mine's at. And so the structure can be a little different. Drag this over into the uh, image object ID location that you want it. And then you put the URI in. So the URI or like URL that I have in here is a uh, LinkedIn, my LinkedIn photo, my own LinkedIn photo. And you can technically add more styling in here if you want. I just straight up replaced it just to show an example. So if I run this step, it uh, should replace the photo. So there we go. We have my LinkedIn photo. Uh, has been updated with my photo. So this is pretty crazy. So feel free to uh, download this. It's free and just play with it yourself. So that was generating our Google Doc from a template. That uh, is my favorite way of doing this whole process and the way I typically do it every time. But let me walk you through two more versions uh, quickly. That is a similar idea, but we're generating the content from uh, Markdown and another one from HTML. So our next workflow is if you need to generate content from a markdown, this is the way to do it. And like before, I've created a um, kind of sample uh, prompt that just kind of says, hey, go generate this markdown for me. You would, again, go create your actual analysis and the uh, output that you would want to make sure in your prompt uh, said was, you know, somewhere it says like, you know, you're going to generate markdown, you know, format markdown. The example I have is like markdown text shows an example table. Uh, and for this sample too, I say like, just include an image just so you can see that you don't have to do all the craziness to input an image if you do markdown. So I follow the same process before we go and get the row from our doc just to show how that works. And then we generate the sample Google doc, which is really just generating markdown. So you can see the output is a markdown which it doesn't look very pretty here, but this ultimately will look much nicer in the Google Doc. So let's then go to the next step, which is this specific node is not a Google Doc node. It's actually a, a drive, Google Drive node, and it is uh, create file from text. And this one will create any Google Doc from text, which makes sense. That's what we're looking for. So we just need to give it a few basic inputs. So it has the file content and the file content is gonna be the output of whatever markdown you have. Again, I'm showing a sample to show the output was from a prompt, but this could take any type of markdown that you have from any location. The file name, I just have a sample with the date, just again for my own sanity. And then I choose the location that I want it to go. And the final most important piece, because this won't be there by default, is convert to Google Doc. So let's run this one. It's going to put the file in our same folder just for simplicity. And I have our markdown sample here. Now, this doesn't look very good. This is, there's one more step, and this one's much more manual, but it's still nice if you want a little bit more control or if you're coming from markdown. I can copy and paste this whole piece. Copy. I'm going to have this option called Paste for Markdown. And when I click Paste for Markdown, it replaces all of my markdown with the actual text. Again, I don't use this one because there's still a manual step, but uh, I definitely could see an option where maybe a uh, salesperson or your team or like an account manager needs to create a Google Doc and the output is like Markdown or they want a little more control over it. This would be perfect because then you could come in here and, you know, you could style it. You know, I want it to be whatever, you know, whatever randomness. That's a terrible font. I want it to be like, uh, you know, I want it to be... Uh, Lexin, you know, medium. Now the question, how did I get uh, this little paste from markdown piece to pop up? It was very simple. I Googled it and I found that it is built into Google Docs 
as an option to paste for Markdown. So uh, if you go to, you know, use Markdown, you can probably just Google searches, you know, use Markdown and Google Docs, and you really just need to follow these steps. So it was uh, going to Google Docs, uh, Tools, Preferences, and then once you check this box for Enable Markdown, it then allows you for any Google Doc from then on, I can now paste uh, for Markdown and it reformats it, which is super cool. Now, the final steps in ADIN would be similar to above. You would want to, you know, share the file and, you know, add it to the Google Doc. I didn't add that down here just to keep us moving quickly through this. Final piece is creating a Google Doc from HTML. This one follows a similar pattern to, uh, you know, get our company from our Google Sheet. And then I'm generating some random HTML. But if you have some type of pre-existing tool that maybe it's generating HTML or you want to style a little bit more, you can use HTML. Again, this version, uh, you don't have to do the crazy thing with the images. It automatically processes the image. So I do just say in this example, output is just like, hey, add an image somewhere. Literally, you know, add an image somewhere that points to, and I just have my LinkedIn profile URL. And this ultimately just generates a bunch of uh, HTML. It's real HTML, but it's again with fake data. So here's our uh, crazy HTML, just a bunch of text, and then we'll use this to generate our Google Doc. Then the next step is to call the Google API. Uh, again, we're getting into more uh, custom advanced endpoints. You should download this and play with this. And uh, if you want to do this step, it should be set up for you to actually be able to like, copy and paste this. So this is going to create a file from the HTML and generate a Google Doc. So all of this is available in the Google API, but I'll just walk you through it here. We're using the post method uh, to make the API request. We're going to upload a file, which is the endpoint that we're using. I've already subbed the credentials from our previous steps. And then we have to send this body. And this body is going to use the raw uh, body content type, which there are a few different options. But for this one specifically, we use the raw. And this is when it gets a little crazy. Let me show you. So this is pretty much what the uh, multi-part uh, expects. We have this like foobar thing. And this was defined up here in our boundary. So it's saying, uh, you know, complicated way of saying like, here's all the, the, the content information, the content type, uh, the actual document information that you need to use. And then we're just saying like, go create it is pretty much what it's saying. So this is kind of the raw way of saying, uh, go create a Google Doc. The important piece you need to add is this MIME type, which you'll see is Google Doc, or Google-apps.doc, and then uh, the parent folder, which I defined in a variable before, and then the actual content of the HTML. Again, this is pretty complicated. Uh, you should be able to use my template here and just set the variables. And I've created a variable for parent folder, the HTML and the file name and the document HTML. And it should just work as long as you have your authentication set up up here. So let's run this one and see what it looks like. Again, this one's one of the most complicated ones. I have yet to actually use this one, uh, but it is interesting. I set it up for a client because we're potentially going to turn some HTML into uh, like a very stylized document, but we ended up not using it. But this would be really good if you wanted to generate uh, a very complex document where you don't necessarily know what the output's going to be, maybe like lots of tables or lists. So it's probably easier to create HTML and or process the HTML and convert it versus trying to go up here and create a custom template and really define each step along the way. So that's really where this one is going to be the most powerful. And really the Markdown too, but the mark, Markdown one, you still have to go and do that manual step. This one you'll see now that's created, you don't actually have to do the manual step because uh, the output from HTML uh, looks really nice. So the output looks real, uh, but you can see this one is, you know, generally looks, looks nice. You know, this was just from the prompt created a bunch of random HTML and it made it, you know, look nice. None of this was predefined. I just said like, hey, go use um, tables and lists. And here's an example of what you could use. This will also use an image. I don't think it grabbed the image or I didn't add it in this one, but the images do work correctly within this. So go play with these. The workflow is 100% free. And if you got value from this, please like, subscribe, and check out my next video.